It is a privilege and an honor to introduce you to our next guest, who is one of my dear childhood friends. We have been friends since the seventh grade. I won't tell you what year that was. But in the meantime, a lot of life has happened. And in 2011, he woke up in a hospital bed after a cycling accident as a paraplegic. And I will let him tell you his story. Please welcome Ron Gold. Ronnie, it's a pleasure to have you here. It's great to be here. Thanks for the warm welcome. You know, it couldn't be warmer. I'm thrilled to have you. And I'm thrilled for you to share your story with our viewers because your story is not only inspirational, it is such a heartwarming and welcome approach to adversity given the times that we're in right now. I think you just have so much to share and our viewers are going to love you. So please share your story, at least a little bit of your story, will you? Sure. Well, the first thing you have to understand is at the time of my accident, my life was going pretty much as I had planned. I had a wonderful wife, three great, healthy and self-adjusted daughters. I had a stimulating and successful career. And I was just uh, a few years away from being an empty nester. And I was really looking forward to some of that travel. But before we get there, it was an unseasonably warm Thanksgiving weekend. And I figured this was going to be one of those last rides I go out on with a group of friends. I was an avid cyclist. I used to regularly go out for 40, 50 mile bike rides with my friends. And uh, on this particular day, we went out. We were just a few miles from home, almost done. When all of a sudden, an out of control SUV comes barreling at us. She crossed the yellow line, hit my buddy Zach first, then me head on without braking. It was 1.06 p.m. and somehow on a bright and sunny day, she had fallen fast asleep. The last thing I remember was keep your head as high as possible so it doesn't bear the brunt of the impact when the SUV hit you. Next thing I know, I'm waking up weeks later out of an induced coma in the hospital. I had been immediately medevaced to the hospital but I wasn't expected to survive. I had massive internal orthopedic injuries. I lost my spleen. My spine was of course crushed and I was in danger of bleeding out. Doctors did an incredible job. They saved my life several times during the course of the 51 days in ICU. I actually don't really remember much, even once I woke up from my time in the hospital. There's only one thing that I clearly remember. When the neurosurgeon came into my room, And he said, Ron, you're never gonna walk again. I couldn't comprehend it. How could I? I was healthy, I was strong, I was active. But that's the way it was. I was discharged after that almost two months and then I went to rehab. And funny, in some ways, rehab was more challenging than being in the hospital because in rehab, the goal was no longer to heal you but to teach you how to live your life as a paraplegic. And I have to tell you, that is a really bitter pill to swallow. Most nights in rehab, I'd cry myself to sleep, hoping and praying I'd wake up in the morning and everything would be all right. It wasn't, there are no backseas. After almost five months in total, I was discharged and I came home. I had nurses, I had caregivers, I had therapists, I had antibiotic infusions, and I could barely move on my own. Now, I needed home care every day, and my caregiver became indispensable, really, in helping me start my day. And that really takes you into this new phase of your life, which it wasn't easy with the home health care providers, was it? The whole system just wasn't there to support you. No, it wasn't. And and it was really uh, a complete lack of independence. I mean, I was a guy who was jumping on an airplane every other week. I would go to Asia to visit clients and colleagues quarterly. And now I could barely move on my own. And that just speaks to how important the caregiver was for me now. I mean, I I thought I knew a decent amount about home care because I was helping my parents manage it, but in reality, I knew very little. Mm -hmm. I quickly learned a number of important things. First of all, 
that it doesn't matter whether you have good private health insurance like I did, or you're on Medicare, you're not gonna get coverage more than a few weeks upon discharge from a hospital. Other things that I learned was you really have two options. You can either use a home care agency, which is easier but more expensive, or you can try to find somebody on your own. I also found out that using a home care agency is very expensive and it's not generally viable for more than a short period of time. And then I also found out that a caregiver only is lucky actually to make half of whatever you pay to the home care agency. And in some, I found a lot of dissatisfaction with both options. This was the time shortly after new business models were being started, Uber, Airbnb, and many, many others. And my wife and I looked at each other and said, well, why can't we do something like that? We understood why people wanted to hire someone privately. It's less expensive. And even more importantly, you get a much better fit. Couldn't we bring technology and streamline that whole process? That would really make a difference. And that, you know, that got us thinking about that. What if we created a platform and we connect families looking for home care with a highly recommended caregiver from our network? That, that would really, you know, fill a gap because we knew that even before the pandemic, the overwhelming majority of Americans want to age at home. And as they age, the demand for home care is only going to increase. There's clearly room for another business model out there. Sure, sure. And that's when you created Lean on We, which I love the it name. Is. I love the name. How did you come up with the name? Well, we, we wanted something that j didn't just say care. Everything says care in the name. And we wanted something different. But we also wanted something that speaks to care. And uh, I'm a big fan of Bill Withers his song, Lean On Me, and we figured Lean On We gives the concept that when you need help, everybody needs a friend to, to lean on, and yeah. that's what we did. And now, in the time of COVID, it's become even more meaningful than ever before because so many people are in need of being able to stay home and, they and really get are. the care and help they need. So how are you addressing that? Well, COVID is a big challenge, of course. I guess the way I would think about it, there's a, there's a short-term implication and, and more of a medium term. And short-term, you're looking at people who are watching these horrible images they see of people dying alone in nursing homes and other communal settings. And it, it just rips your heart out. And, and you're thinking, okay, there's got to be a better way. But really, right now, everyone is so fearful. They know they don't want to go into that communal setting, but at the same time, they don't want to bring somebody in their home. And the caregivers don't want to go in those homes. And we know that rapid testing is not yet in, 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 a, in a situation where it's widespread and accurate that that can really address the problem. So what we've been recommending people do is have live-in care. Because if you have live-in care, you don't have to worry where that caregiver's been because they're with you. And, and likewise for the caregiver, they don't have to worry about the traffic coming into the home. So I'd say that, that would, that's the short-term solution we've been using. Medium term, we actually think that there's, there's some uplifting news out there. And that is what we've seen in this time of COVID is a dramatic increase in the use of telemedicine. And you know, people have talked about telemedicine for some time, but it really hasn't taken hold. And now we've started to see it really kick in. And that has great implications because if people can get health care at home, then they can live safely at home and enjoy the quality of life they actually want. And they want to be at home, but they want to do it safely and healthfully. Absolutely. And I know from my own situation, having moved in with my brother so I could help care for the kids and also my parents who are just down the road, we are insanely careful. I mean, just beyond careful about how we handle my parents and making sure that they can stay at home and only people who, the only people who enter, we, we are pretty much cleared. So it makes a very big difference. How You're, how lucky, you? you're lucky to have them so close. It, it's, it's really a blessing. It's a Take huge good care blessing. Of them. Yes, <laughs> they love you too. <laughs> and I, so I, how are you able to get the word out? I mean, you guys do so much work around how to help people 
do well at home, thrive at home, get care at home. You've got so much information that you've gleaned through all this experience. How are you able to get the word out now? Well, obviously that's crucial. It, it's not you build a better mousetrap and the world comes to you because it doesn't work that way. Uh, we, we blog aggressively. We put out a blog every other week. Um, we're active in social media. Uh, I do speaking. Uh, I network with people. And I'm really looking in, in the time of COVID to take advantage of this virtual environment to, to spread our wings even further. And, uh, and particularly to, to do Zoom sessions, to do interviews, and, and really get the word out by publicly speaking about what, what we are about. Excellent. And, and that's the best thing you can do. I mean, sharing the knowledge, I think right now, you and I have talked about this, how as awful as it is, it enables you to actually do more since everyone is doing everything remotely. And the opportunities then to share your information are more suited than having to worry about struggling with a wheelchair in and out of the chair, in and out of the car and, and being more mobile. So in certain ways, this has been a blessing and an assistance in a way that you can assist a community that you are now a part of. And I know since that, right. that day in 2012, when you woke up, um, you've had to dig pretty deep to really understand and pull on some strengths that maybe you didn't even know you had. And now as pa part of the paraplegic community, but also as par part of the para-athletic community, because you were always such an athlete and we're so grateful for the strength you had to survive. So how does that work out for you? Because you've done some crazy stuff even now. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> Well, well, really, you're right. I, I, I have to say, you, you really don't know the inner strength until you're, you're, you're tested in a very big way. And this was my, my test, I guess. Not, not a test I would have wanted, uh, but may, maybe really that's the, the biggest lesson is that you know, you, you, it's not the cards you're dealt. You don't really have a choice on that. You have to play the cards you are dealt as best you can. And I really had to dig deep because I was really feeling sorry for myself after this happened. And I was just sitting around. Well, yes, of course I was sitting around. What else would I do? <laughs> but I was, I was sitting around really feeling, feeling sorry for myself. And, and I looked around, you know, my, my girls, my daughters were at a pivotal stage. They were teens going into, into early 20s and they were, they were going off to their own lives. And, and I realized that I, I need to get a hold of myself and, and recapture that, that fatherhood again. And, and what I did is I said to myself is you, you need to continue to present a lesson for them. It's no longer kicking the soccer ball or helping them with math, which they never really liked anyway. <laughs> but, but it's about teaching them a lesson that life throws a lot of stuff at you and, and you got to, metaphorically run with it as best you can and and i realized once i once i felt that that i did have the resources internally to go for that i was always very disciplined and and determined and driven and and i needed that in my wall street career and i also needed it in my athletic career i found i found athletic pursuits sort of off the beaten path i i i loved rock climbing and ice climbing and kayaking and telemark skiing and and all kinds of and and of course running and 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 bicycling and um, even after i had a near-death experience rock climbing i went back and I, I and i did it again i know and, and so when this <laughs> happened people said to me okay okay ronnie what are you going to do now and they said well why don't you play basketball and i was like well i was a terrible basketball player before why would i play it now and uh and, and, but I did find rowing and I, I really took to rowing. I, I needed something where I would, I would really be working physically out there. And, um, and last year in the fall, I, I competed in, in several regattas and I, in one actually I capsized and I nearly drowned. And then a few weeks wait, later, I went back and I entered the, the head of the school call, which is a very, uh, famous race in Philadelphia, and I got a silver medal. So that was was like there again, you know, 
just get back on that horse and keep going. And, and that's really the, the, the attitude you need to have to, to conquer any, any big trial. Absolutely true. And now you're out speaking about it and you're sharing your story about, you know, meeting adversity head on and actually making good of it. And I think the stories that you tell and the lessons that you've learned are amazingly well-timed for us now, for, you know, the, the average person to hear when we're feeling sorry for ourselves having to stay home during COVID or we're afraid about the virus and we're not quite sure what to do, we count on people like you to come through and share your stories and help us realize that there is a whole lot more out there that we need to be focused on. And thank you so much for sharing all that. And I really look forward to for watching your speaking career take off. So that's exciting stuff. How can people learn more about Lean on We and where can they find you? We have a website. It's uh, leanonwe.com. Perfect. And we'll put it on the screen and people Thank will be you. able to find you from there. Thank you so much for joining us. I would love to have you back and hear more of the story. You're an inspiration and I just love you dearly. Thank you so much for being with us. And the feeling is mutual. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Lauren. And Speak we'll you be soon. right back.